Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 6.2. I know it's been a long time, but hopefully we can be back for those things. So we've got a special guest star here. And that's it. So hopefully uh, the uh, sight word things from the iPod won't drive you too insane. So maybe you'll learn something too, Justin. Um, today we're going to go over names and phase changes. MC, this should be delta T and M delta H. Use MC delta T when you change temperature. And you use M delta H when you change state. And we just barely touch on that one. And we're going to go over calorimetry, which is the lab that we do. So... Um, phase changes. Don't make this hard. Okay, so there's a story about a frog. If you put a frog in warm water and then slowly cook it, it will stay in there until it's all done. Mm, frog legs. But if you drop it into boiling water, it will leave. I don't know. So phase changes would be solid to a liquid. That would be melting. Uh, liquid to solid would be freezing. Solid to a gas is called sublimation. Gas to solid is deposition. Liquid to gas is boiling. And gas to liquid is condensation. Evaporation is not boiling because it happens at the surface only. And it happens below the boiling point. Yeah. Okay. So when substance change temperature, energy is transferred. Um, whoops. Let's see. So energy is transferred. Um, Q equals MC delta T. Q is the heat in joules, sometimes calories. M is the mass in grams. Um, occasionally they call it moles, and it is in moles, obviously. C is specific heat in joules per gram degree Celsius or calories per gram degree Celsius. Um, delta T is the change in temperature in Celsius or Kelvin. If Q is negative, the system lost heat. And if Q is positive, the system gained heat. System being the reactants is another way of looking at it. Specific heat, what's that? Specific heat is the energy it takes to change one gram, one degree Celsius. Um, it can be related to speed. So when I think of specific heat, um, if I think of barefoot Hoosiers, those are people from Indiana, in the summer. In the summer, it is 100 degrees outside. That would be Fahrenheit, but still. And if it's 100 degrees at uh, 4 o'clock, then the sand you would expect to be 100 degrees. And when you're on the sand and it's 100 degrees outside, you go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, it's burning my feet, it's burning my feet, my biscuits are burning, ow, ow. But, and what do you do? You get out of the sand, and you run into the water. Um, if there's not water around, then you run into the grass, or in Indiana, weeds. And it's still 100 degrees, but it doesn't hurt your little feeties as bad. Why not? Because sand is a good conductor. And if you are a good conductor, that means you have a low specific heat, which is abbreviated C. If you are grass, or any living thing, or water, you have a high specific heat, abbreviated C. I don't know why I said cooking roadkill in the winter. That's kind of confusing. Um, oh, I guess you actually have to cook it instead of let the road do it. But if it is Thanksgiving, yay, Thanksgiving, and it's almost here. Um, look at my oven. Isn't that awesome? Um, and you have your little oven door, and you preheat your oven to 450. So if it's 450 degrees, the air inside is 450. And the metal rack inside is 450. Now, if I stick my hand, or my finger, because I can draw a little pointy hand, in the oven and into the air, it feels warm, but it doesn't burn me. But if I touch the... Oh, it didn't change color. If I touch the metal rack, I scream, Ah! It's so hot, it burns, it burns. Why? Well, which one conducts better? So air has a high specific heat, it conducts slowly, and an oven rack has a low specific heat, it conducts quickly. Again, metals, whoops, I put meals, metals typically have a lower specific heat. So let's do some calculations. What is the heat capacity of mercury if it requires 166.9 joules to change the temperature of 15 grams of mercury from 25 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius? So heat capacity is C. 
um, this joules would be Q. Um, 15 grams is the mass. And 25 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius is delta T. Um, mercury does not change temperature over that time. It would tell you if it did, but it doesn't. So I'm going to use Q equals mc delta T. So Q is 166.9. And mass is 15. Specific heat is what I'm solving for. And delta T is 8. 33 minus 25 is 8. So C is, mm, I don't know, I'll say D. It should be small. It's probably A, though. It's one of those two. I think it's A. I don't know. Do the math. I don't have a calculator. My batteries are dead. I gave my calculator to Joe. How much heat is required? Heat is Q. Uh, to raise the temperature of a 7.71 gram sample, that's mass. Uh, specific heat, oh, that's specific heat, from 25.0 to 79.8. So, again, I am trying to find Q. I guess that's not again. Q equals MC delta T. Q is what I'm looking for. And I have 7.71. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Um, specific heat is 0. 0.450. And delta T is um, 25 to 79.8. So that's the, uh, about 55 degrees. 54.8 degrees. Um, and then you solve for Q. And whatever that is. I don't know what it is. So there you go. Do the math. It's one of those choices. Delta H and Q. Um, AP loves this question. Um, they give you a reaction where heat, um, you have to figure out the heat. So you do Q equals MC delta T. And then they want delta H. And all delta H is is Q over moles. So whatever your Q would be, you divide it by moles. So Q over moles. So if something was 1,750 joules and you know you had 0.25 moles and we all know that it would really be grams that they would give you and not moles, then that would be it. And that's all you have to do. Changing state. Q equals mole delta H. It's H. Sorry. Fusion. And mole equals M mole delta H vaporization. Check your sign. Um, if you are going from a low energy state, like this would be solid to liquid, it would be positive. But if it's liquid to solid, it would be negative. And vaporization, of course, is liquid to gas, which would be positive, and gas to liquid, which would be negative. Um, you also have a Q equals mole delta H um, of sublimation. And that would have a positive or negative sign. The mole delta H of sublimation is delta H sub equals delta, wow, H fusion plus delta H vaporization. Hess's law again, right? You don't care how you get there. You just got to get there. Oh, this is one that doesn't really have a number on it. So hopefully you've copied that down. And then you can see that I'm just going to skip over it. Um, what is the smallest? Uh, whatever. I'm going to skip it. Um, water states, I'm sorry, stats you should be familiar with. Um, you don't need to memorize them, but you do need to have them handy. Um, 80.0 calories per gram is delta H fusion of H2O. And 540 calories per gram is a delta H VAP of H2O. And 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius is the C of H2O. And the other thing that's important to know is 4.18 joules equals one calorie. So you can do that conversion. Pardon me. Calorimetry labs. In Excel, we added hot metal bars to cold water. This is red. Isn't that clever? Look, it's red. OK, it looks great to me. I'll admit it. So I have the MC delta T, so the mass of the water, times the specific heat of the water times a change in temperature of the water, oh, except for I said these are all metals, um, yields, so these are all metals. So M of the mass of the metal, specific heat of the metal, change in temperature of the metal, equals mass of the water, specific heat of the water, change in T of the water, sorry. Um, and then you find the C of the metal. Now, this, you can measure the mass of it. You know the specific heat of water, and you can measure the change in temperature of the water. Um, you can measure the mass of the metal. We're trying to determine specific heat because that helps you identify a metal. Um, delta T of the metal, okay, so delta T does not equal delta T because what does equal is T sub F 
is equal. So they're both going to end up at the same temperature, but the water is going to get hotter and the metal is going to get colder. So, and then you're going to find the C of the metal by that's the only variable you don't know. And then C is mc delta T over mc delta T. So these guys are in red; they're the metal. I think this is in color, yeah. Eris, if you slowly transfer the metal, so if I have hot metal and I'm slow, so I've got hot metal, and I'm transferring it slowly into my water, I'm going to lose some of the heat from the metal, right? So if I lose some of that heat, that means my delta T of the water will be too small. So this is the delta T of my water, that'll be too small. So if this number is too small, that means that C would be too small. Oh, how sad new color. The calorimeter absorbs some heat. You want all of the heat to go into the water. Go hot, get hotter, get hotter. But some of it goes into the container. Oh. If it goes in the container, again, the delta T of the water is going to be too small. Oh, too small. Oh, too small. C is going to be, oh, too small. So, there's some answers to your lab tomorrow. Bomb calorimeter, oh boy. Um, if you blow up or burn something in a little container down here, um, the heat changes the temperature of the water, and the water is over here. Um, and then the energy from burning, so the energy that the burning thing gives off equals the energy the water absorbs. So again, the calorimeter will take some heat, Oops. Um, and it often asks for delta H, which is Q over moles. So there you go. Mac Daddy Lab. Okay, so we are going to do a lab. Another online lab. I know you can't wait. We're going to have solid and AOH and put it in water and see the change in temperature per mole. When things dissolve, typically things get warmer or colder. And with sodium chloride, it gets, sorry, sodium hydroxide, it gets warmer. Then I'm going to put NaOH and HCl. So aqueous NaOH, that's the solution, and aqueous HCl. And that also is going to get warmer. Whenever you make water, um, it gets warmer. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take solid sodium hydroxide into hydrochloric acid. Now the first thing solid hydrochloric, first thing solid sodium hydroxide is going to do is turn into, yep, you guessed it, aqueous sodium hydroxide, which was what number one said. So compare three, reaction three, right here, to the sum of one and two using Hess's law. And you're going to find the delta H of it, which, remember, is going to be delta H equals Q over moles, and that would be moles of NaOH. Ah, 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 ah. That's weird. Um, phase change diagrams. Uh, oh, I almost did the wrong one. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, this is a solid warming. I suppose I should give you some axes here. Um, this is kinetic energy. That's temperature to you and me, Russ. Um, and this is time of heating. And my favorite lab in Chemic Cell is where I have you sit and watch water boil for 25 minutes. Um, this is ice melting. Now, when ice melts, that is a potential energy increases. When this is warming, kinetic energy increases. Here I have a liquid warming, and the reason why I know it's warming and I know kinetic energy is increasing is because my kinetic energy chart is going up. And here I have boiling. Notice my kinetic energy is constant, and, but PE, potential energy, is increasing. Potential energy is like the energy of bonds. Believe it or not, we, know, we talk about potential energy being the energy of um, position, but it's the energy of bonds, because bonds have certain positions. And this is gas, um, warmer, and its kinetic energy goes up. Okay. Um, you can also do the same thing at cooling down. Solid versus gas at 300K, which has more kinetic energy, they're the same. Why are they the same? 300K. Which has more potential energy? Gas, because it has more potential energy because of its position. If it condenses, it will make a stronger difference in bonds. So um, that is it. So we're out of here in 1430. Sorry, there's no music. You heard my daughter was playing with her little iPhone thing. And she's learning how to do math at least as well as Austin. So I will say toodles, and I will see you in class on Friday. Enjoy.